In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today the Mass is offered for Rose Maloney. Uh, today we also continue through our final novena on the way to uh, the birth of Christ. So we honor the Adonai, the Lord, uh, today as, as uh, the O Antiphon. And today is actually a wonderful day for us to honor St. Joseph in particular for his role in the birth of Christ as we hear in the readings today. Also yesterday we had our holy hour, which was a, a wonderful privilege. I think we had a, a higher than normal turnout. And uh, at the request of different people, even some of those who watch the videos online, the holy hour itself was recorded. So, of course, recording a holy hour, of course, there's a lot of the holy hour where nothing's happening. It's just, it's just time for prayer. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, people requested, and so it was recorded, including the rosary and the litanies and the different um, things that we said. So for those who especially who are at home and who are interested, um, they can participate in that uh, virtual way through the recording of the holy hour from last night. Uh, let us begin this Mass acknowledging our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who were weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin, may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they gave him, the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north and from all the lands to which I banished them. They shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Response is, Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity on the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that we're told in the prophet Jeremiah, so in the first reading and in the psalm, um, is that we are looking forward to the coming of the righteous one, a righteous shoot uh, born from David, um, that with your judgment then endow the king, King David and then King David's son after him. And so who is this descendant of David who would be known for righteousness? Who would be this righteous man that was born then of the line of David, uh, of the root of Jesse? And so we look forward to our Lord Jesus Christ. Except, pause for just a moment, because maybe I can say we look forward to Joseph. Because let's not overlook Joseph also with respect to the things that we've just heard today. Because we are reminded that he is referred to also as that righteous man. Someone who was dedicated toward justice, but also who did not wish to uh, unnecessarily do anyone harm. And so he finds himself in this very difficult situation. So here, of course, all things can be solved by God in God's providence. But Mary was put into a very awkward position because uh, agreeing to the wish of God to become the mother of our Lord, um, so herself being found with child, she was now in the precarious position of now being, uh, of expecting a child when Joseph knew that his uh, fiance, the, the one to whom he was betrothed, uh, was not, that he was not the father. And so normally speaking, this would be something that would uh, lead to punishment according to the Mosaic Law, because it's evident proof of adultery. So Joseph is a righteous man, and yet unwilling to expose her um, to shame. Um, and so he decides himself then to treat with her very gently, um, in a certain sense. And we might even say that he takes the shame upon himself, because many people would look upon him then as someone who they would presume to be, a father who doesn't want to take responsibility for, for his to-be wife and child. Um, and so this is a, it's an awkward situation all the way around. But Joseph is also a man of faith because he does hear the words of the angel and the explanation of the angel, and so he gives his consent and takes Mary into his home. So everything actually is worked out in the end, but it's, it's, there's a dangerous moment here along the way. What is Joseph going to do? Well, he is known for justice and righteousness and also for goodness, this descendant of David. David himself, who was not always clean on this point. David himself who committed adultery and even murder. So David is not the purest, doesn't have the purest record with this. But then who is it that the prophet Jeremiah says that the Lord will raise up a righteous shoot to David, that as a king he shall govern wisely? Well, Joseph indeed is a righteous man, and he does govern wisely. He governs the Holy Family wisely and well. Um, not punishing, uh, just simply to punish, but mercifully and kindly and gently. Um, and so perhaps to a certain extent, we should take the words of the prophet Jeremiah and apply them first to Joseph and then to Jesus as the Messiah. Remember what the psalm says. 
With your judgment, endow the king, and with your justice, the king's son. So we have not only Joseph, but also Jesus, who we can say the psalm, that not only father and son, or foster father and son. Uh, so the psalm, in fact, might be speaking then both of Joseph and of Jesus. Uh, that would, I think, be a very fitting way to think about this, so that way we honor good St. Joseph today. And so then we might even ask this question, is this something that Jesus would remember later on in his public ministry, when he thinks about what it means to take upon himself the responsibility or the guilt of the sin of others, Jesus the righteous man who himself is willing to suffer in order to not expose to shame those who have been imprisoned by sin. Might Jesus have learned to a certain extent from the noble and the good example of his father Joseph? Looking to Joseph, would that be something inspiring? Of course, we know Jesus is God, and anything that Joseph was inspired by, we can say he's inspired by the goodness of God ultimately. But Jesus was also a man who grew in wisdom and in knowledge, who was obedient to his parents. And so to a certain extent, I think um, Jesus can look upon and in fact really profit from and benefit from and maybe even be formed by that the way in which he would speak and teach later, he might be in fact uh, influenced by that noble example of Joseph. Remember that Jesus was not ashamed to be called the son of a carpenter. Maybe in particular, we should say that he was not ashamed to be called the son of this particular carpenter, Joseph, because Joseph, in fact, was a noble man. There is no shame in that. So he might be of meager means as far as the world is concerned, but a man surpassing virtue when it comes to those who judge according to the spiritual life. So Jesus, in fact, I think, can very much take pride in the example of Joseph and the privilege that it was for him to be able to claim him also as a father. So that noble example of Joseph, we know, of course, also that Joseph is entrusted as the patron of the universal church, so we too can call upon him, his noble example, as we ask him to pray for us and to help us, in fact, to grow in righteousness, to be people of justice, but also people of surpassing charity. Um, perhaps it's uh, fitting, then, that if we were to look behind us, that the symbol of justice, the scales of justice, are connected very closely then to the heart of charity. Um, so those two symbols bound together capture two distinct elements that really stand out to us in the example of good St. Joseph this day. Let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God, that we might progress in justice and charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all fathers, especially fathers of families, uh, that they might be known for their strength, for their compassion, for their love, for their righteousness, and for their holiness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for blessings upon all expectant mothers and for the gift of a healthy childbirth. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the suffering, for those who are unemployed, those in particular need, especially in our own society and in our families. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the health of the sick, for the recovery of those who are ill, and for the end of the spread of disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all of the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Maloney family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the protection of our religious liberties and the freedom of the Church, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think sometimes, maybe even especially in our society, it's good for us to remember the challenges that fathers, that, that men can face at times, and, and to really look to St. Joseph as a great example. So what does it mean to balance strength and compassion with courage and with faith? And Joseph really is quite a noble example in that regard. So um, sometimes I know we focus a lot on the uh, on women within the church on sort of a, you know sort of feminine aspects but it's also good to remember those masculine qualities as well so we can balance all those things and as we look to the holy family and the examples of mary and joseph what wonderful encouragement we draw so today in particular we hold up saint joseph as a good and noble example for us to follow the lord be with you amen. may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.